anyhow. The, 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 you just got to have a anyhow spirit every now and then. I ain't got no gas in the car, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. My money's looking kind of funny, but I'm going to praise him yes, sir. anyhow. Yes, sir. My in-laws and outlaws are acting kind of strange, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. Yes, sir. Amen. The church may not be filled up this morning, but we're going to have church anyhow. Yes, sir. Uh, y'all got to get with me this morning, and we're going to get ourselves uh, into, some, into some good stuff today. Into some good stuff today. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, make a name for yourself. Make a name for yourself. Isn't it a shame to think that it's possible for an individual to be born and live a life and not be known by anybody? Make a name for yourself. Jesus Christ is the only one that I am aware of that yes, when sir. I link up with Jesus, I can go from being a nobody to being a somebody. Yes, uh, we're going somewhere this morning. If you give me a little time, I thank you, Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about making a name for yourself. Yes, sir. If you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 19, starting at verse 13 through 20. I thank God I printed this out this morning. <laughs> I really do. I always remembered. I was like, you know what? What am I going to do if the battery dies on that thing or something? I won't have my message. So I had to print it out. Turn to Acts chapter 13, 19, starting at verse number 13 through 20. And in this story here in Acts, we will find that there are some people that are linked to this priest who are going out and have the audacity to try to cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus when they don't even know Jesus for themselves. Yes. We have to be careful how we use the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Anyway, we're going to talk about making a name for yourself. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 19, starting at verse 13. Are you ready? Um, if you don't mind, we will stand this morning. I know we don't always do that, and, and I guess we should decide what we're going to do. I'll ask you to stand, and if you don't feel like standing, I'm not going to be offended. <laughs> Acts 19, verse 13 through 20. And the NIV text reads as this. It says, some Jews went around driving out evil spirits, tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know. And I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. You may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to get to this text in just a minute. So here are these seven guys going around pretending like they have some authority in the earth realm, seeking to use the name of Jesus to cast spirits out of people. I, I read a little history on that. and They were doing this for monetary gain and for purposes. They were like sorcerers and, and, and soothsayers, and they would go around and they would make money by trying to cast these spirits out of people. And so here they were, and they met up with this devil that was some kind of devil. And they go in and say, well, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches about, recognize that they weren't talking about the Jesus that they knew anything about, other than that Paul was preaching in his name, to come out. And that spirit says, well, Jesus Christ I know, and Paul I know. I, I, I want to say what I'm thinking, but who the hell are you? <laughs> I want to make such an impact in the kingdom of God that the devil knows me 
by name. Oh, y'all are getting quiet with me right now. I know you don't want to talk about the devil and you want to put your head in the sand and pretend that he does not exist, but he is real. And I want to make such an impact in the kingdom of darkness that they know me by name. Yes. Uh, that's not one of those prayers that you hear people pray a whole lot. I want to do so much hell against the enemy that he knows me by name. So we want to talk about making a name for yourself. To make a name for yourself, this phrase means to become well known and respected for doing something in particular. At this part of the ser sermon, we're going to be a little bit interactive. Erica, you need to sit up. Thank you. We're going to be interactive. I'm going to say a name. And then you can raise your hand and tell me what you think. Michael Jordan, what comes to mind? Erica. Uh, Michael Jackson. Singing. Tiger Woods. Bill Gates. <laughs> he said money. <laughs> he right. Money. Microsoft and computers. Denzel Washington. Martin Luther King Jr. That's right, so right. Billy Graham. And Shirley Caesar. So today we're talking about making a name for yourself and about how these individuals have made a name for themselves so great that people can identify them with certain things in their life just because of their name. So when I say Tiger Woods, the first thing that you think about is the first black guy to win a Masters. When I say Tiger Woods, the first thing that comes to your mind is golf. Mm -hmm. The first thing. So I want Deacon Garrett's name to be so well known that when you say his name, the first thing you think about is that he's a child of God and he's serious about his faith. Do you see where I'm going today? So many times we as believers are in the club, but nobody knows who we are. Amen. Because our actions and the things that we do do not imply that we are who we say we are. Amen. Amen. Hmm. I want to make a name for myself in the few days that I have here in the earth. Yes, I want Amen. people to know yes, that when they say my name, they say there goes a man yes, or sir. woman of God. When yes, they say my name, they say there goes a person who will put others' needs ahead of his own. Yes, Do you sir. get where I'm coming from this morning? Proverbs 22 and 1 says that a good name is more desirable than great riches. Yes, sir. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Yes. And I'm not just talking about having a good name that other people say there goes a good person. There goes a godly person. I'm talking about having such a good name that the enemy even knows who you are. Yes, sir. That when you step foot in Walmart, the devils get a little bit nervous. When you step foot in a church, the devil gets a little bit nervous. Yes, sir. There goes Pastor Northington. That man likes to cause us some trouble. I wish he would stay away from this church. Every time he comes in, we got to go out. Do you understand where I'm coming from this morning? I want God's presence in my life so much so that the enemy yes, will know me by name. Y'all are with me this morning. I don't care if I got to be the only one. Somebody's yes, got to be willing to do the works yeah. of Christ in these last days. Yes, and if I have to do it all by myself, Amen. then I'll do it all by myself. Somebody's got to be willing to lay hands on the sick and see yes. them recover. All Somebody's right. got to be willing yes, to tell the devil to flee and expect the devil to go. Somebody's got to be willing to do those greater works that Jesus told the disciples that after you receive the yes. power of the Holy Ghost, yes, you'll be able to do some great things. All right. yes. Somebody has got to aspire to have that kind of a name. Yes, sir. But but you know the kind of name that, that some of us aspire to have. I'm a Christian now. 
All I got to do is come to church, like I said this morning, eat a little chicken on Sunday, and sit down and sing a little song, and that's it for me. Well, as long as that's all you do, then your name is not going to be great in the kingdom. Yes, Somebody's got to make some ways in the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Somebody's got to go into those scary places and yank some folk out. It ain't going to be easy, baby, but the Holy Ghost is yes, living sir. on the inside of you and can empower you through Jesus Christ to go into enemy hell territory and reclaim that which is lost. Yes, I don't want my name to be great. I can't speak for you. Yes, I can only right. speak for myself. Yes, Amen. You may be content with being a pew warmer. You may be content with doing church two times a month. That may be where you are, but that's not where I want to be. I aspire to be more. When these individuals like Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan and, and, and all of these famous people, they aspire to be great. So what did they do? They employed principles in their life that brought about the greatness that they so desired. Michael Jordan shooting hoops hours after hours after hours. Tiger Woods going to golf practice eight hours a day. You don't get to be great without putting in some work. Oh, I'm going to come over here again and say it over here. You cannot have a great name without putting in some work. So you need not think that you're going to be in the kingdom of God making a difference and wanting a great name so that the enemy will know who you are without putting in some work. Amen. You gotta put in some work. You're not gonna have the faith to believe that you can cast out a devil unless you get in that Bible and read where the Bible says, from the Lord comes deliverance. He has given us authority, yes, according to Luke, to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all powers of the enemy. Yes, you got to read it and read it and rehearse it in yourself and get it in your spirit. So when the devil comes your way, yes, you can sir. say, I see you, devil, and you're not getting a hold of me. You're not touching nobody in my family. You're not getting in my house. You're not getting in my church. I'm making a name for myself. Yes, and I'm putting these principles into practice yes, and there are yes. things that I have got to do if I want to have a great name now I know you say well he wants to be all of that no I don't want my name on the billboards I don't ever have to be one of those individuals that has his own conference with 10 and 20,000 people. All I want to be is one of those people that when the devil sees me coming, the devil gets to running. I just want to be one of those like old grandmama that can pray up some stuff in the closet and get some stuff out of her house. Y'all know we had some praying grandmamas and grandpapas that would pray for their babies and do warfare on behalf of their children. I don't have to have the the largest church in the community. I just want a great name in the kingdom. I want yes, a great sir. name All right. in yes, the sir. kingdom. Amen. I want a great name in the kingdom. We must ask ourselves, what am I doing to make a name for myself in the household of faith? There is no greater honor than for someone to see you and to say there goes a true believer. Now, you ask yourself, that implies some stuff. Amen. When you say, someone says, there goes a true believer. Yes, sir. You got to ask yourself, what exactly is it that you believe? <laughs> if somebody calls me a true believer, that implies that I believe that I have authority in the earth realm to do battle in the spirit realm. I have a true believer. That means that I know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. I'm a true believer. That means I recognize that Jesus, through Jesus, there is a healing anointing that can come upon an individual that can heal them in their physical body. All so right. when somebody sees me and says, well, there goes a true believer, I want them to know that I believe the fullness of the word of God. Yes, sir. I'm not going to be guilty of picking out this and that 
because my denomination says I'm not supposed to believe this or that. I'm going to believe the fullness of the word as revealed to me in the scriptures and via the Holy Spirit. Because, yes, see, there was some stuff that I couldn't wrap my mind around that I had to be taught. Yes. All right. And once I was taught it, I got the word to validate it, and then I started putting it into practice. There's some stuff that you may even hear today that you've never been taught. But if you go into your prayer closet long enough and talk to God about it, he will reveal to you the authenticity of the words that are being spoken. You need to know that you can have a great name in the kingdom and that the enemy can know you by name. And that's what we want. That's what All we right. want. Yes. All right. We want believers who are firm and fixed in the affirmation of what they believe. I've got authority. Amen. Do you recognize that you have authority? Amen. What do you think it was that made Jesus get out of the boat, bottom of the boat and go and stand on the stern of the boat and speak to the wind and the wind calm and speak to the waves and the waves die down? That's yes, an authority. And when Jesus died, the Bible says that that very self-same spirit is now living on the inside of me, which yes, means sir. I've got yes, some authority yes. in this earth. Yes, sir. So we go around and we're anemic, anemic, lame Christians and we get this idea that all Christianity is is about fellowshipping and going to church and having a good time at church and, and we forget that our children are being attacked by demonic spirits and that we need to be able to go into enemy hell territory and yank our children out of the clutches of the enemy. I gotta know how to fight for my babies. You need to know how to fight for your babies because you better believe that the devil is on their trail. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You better believe that the enemy is going to do whatever he can to try to slow them down and hinder them as they seek after what God has for them in right. your life, in yes, their sir. life. He's going to try whatever tactic that he can. And we got to be one step ahead of him. Mm -hmm. We got to be looking. We got to be like that watchman on the wall. We got to be staring it out, trying to see, is this the enemy? Is he going to get in on this side? Is he going to try to sneak in on that side? Where is he at? Uh-huh. You think you're getting in my house through that TV show? I'm sorry, but you ain't getting up in here. No, not, not in my house. I'm watching. I'm watching. And we have to be on guard. And we have to watch. Yes. There have to be corresponding works that validate your faith. I'm going to read to you James chapter 2, starting at verse number 14 through 26. James chapter 2, starting at verse 14 through 26. We're talking about being a true believer and making a name for yourself. There have to be corresponding works that validate your faith. In James, it says, What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing excuse me, about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God good, even the demons believe that and shudder. We need to understand that there have to be corresponding works that go along with saying that I have this name of being a Christian. It can't just be all that being a Christian means is that I get to come to church on Sunday morning. There have to be corresponding works that go along with it. Do you know what the scripture said about Jesus? And we're going to get to that in just a minute. It says that Jesus said 
that the things that I have done, you will also do, and even greater things. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is that it's one thing for me to say that I have faith in God, but I have a responsibility to have some signs to go along with what I believe. Yes, it's not enough to just say, I believe Jesus, I believe Jesus. That's not going to help anybody. But if I say, I believe Jesus, and I'm going to help meet your needs, I believe Jesus, and I'm going to come and pray for you and believe for your healing. I believe I have faith in Jesus, and I'm going to actually do something with what I believe. All right. I heard people say, you know, I hear Deacon Garrett always say, I believe in praying and doing. Well, that's where we're coming from. And it's not enough to just say that I believe Jesus can do it. I need to help Jesus to do it. And you say, well, how can I help Jesus to do it? Sometimes you need to pray. Sometimes you got to fast and pray. Sometimes you need to buffet your own self. There's things that you can do that can help that prayer along its way. But it's not enough to just tell people, I'm a Christian. And I wear that name. But there is no corresponding works that go along with it. I've got to be doing something if I'm going to be saying something. I've got to be doing something if I claim to be a Christian. Yes. I've got to be loving the unlovable. Yes. I've got to be forgiving those who others can't yes, forgive. I've got to be going into the highways and byways and compelling yes, people to come to the cross of Jesus yes, Christ. Sir. I have a responsibility to not only say it, but I got to show it. It ain't enough to just go around waving your Christian banner, saying, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But all you do is go to church on Sunday morning, and then you go back home. Well, wow, that's exciting, isn't it? Mm. What about all the other stuff that Jesus did in his ministry? What about all the other things that Jesus did in his ministry? I'm supposed to be an imitator of Jesus Christ, but so often, we limit being a Christian to coming to a church service and then going back home. But it's more than that. Amen. It's got to be more than that. If we would employ some of the things that Jesus did in the earth, we wouldn't have so much hell in our church. Yes, if we did some of the right. things that Jesus did in our homes, we wouldn't have so much mess in our families. If yes, we sir. would just take authority in our own homes, yes, sir. some of the stuff that we go through, we wouldn't even have to go through. Yes, right. sir. But no, we limit it. And we say, well, I got Jesus now, and I'm going to heaven. Yes, sir. I get to come to church on Sunday and eat a little fried chicken and then go on back home. And then you're dealing with life issues mm -hmm. all week long. Yes, sir. And you can't get back to church fast enough to try to get an answer yes, from a preacher when you got Jesus living on the inside yes, of you. Amen. How foolish is that? I'm yes, going to wait two weeks to see the preacher when right. God is living on the inside yes, of me. I don't got to wait on nobody yes, to come sir. make the devil leave my house because I know I've got the authority to make him go myself. And we need to get to that place. All right. In our own life, yes, where we made a name to where the enemy knows us by name. Complacent Christianity is all too common. The devil has lulled us into thinking that all we have to do is attend those church services and sing a few songs and wait to die and go to heaven. We're content with membership. We're content with our programs. We're content with our spiritual lives because nobody has grabbed you and shaken you and told you that there is more yes. to this life than living and dying. There is more to yes, this sir. Christian journey than just living, existing, doing church, and dying. What a sad existence. What a sad existence. All I'm going to do, come to church, go to a revival or two. I'm going to go to the 
BTU Congress, yeah, I'm going to do that. That'll surely get me some brownie points with God there. Uh, I'm going to go over there. I heard they're having a revival down the road there, and I'm going to tiptoe in and, and give them 30 minutes of my time, and, and I'm going to be doing something. Mm. Now, you know what to make your name great? is when you're at Walmart and you see somebody who has a need and you help them meet that need. You see somebody stranded on the side of the road and you take time out of your busy schedule to just stop by and say, what can I do to help? It's not enough to say I'm a Christian. I got to be yes, a sir. Christian. Yes. It's not enough to claim it. Yes, I got to show it. Yes, sir. Yes, I got to show it. I've got to show it. It was what Jesus did that made his name great. All of those people who I named earlier, Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan, it was what they did that made them great, wasn't it? Yes. Nobody would have known who Michael Jordan was if he hadn't have been a star basketball player. Nobody would have known who Martin Luther King Jr. was if it had not been for God using him so impactfully in the civil rights movement. It was what he did that made his name so great. So let us just talk about it for a minute. What exactly did Jesus do? I'm reminded that he got down into some mud and he wiped them on a man's yes, eyes. Sir. And the man went and washed yes, himself sir. and he got his sight back. I'm reminded yes, of a sir. lady who said, if I just press through this crowd yes, and if sir. I can just touch the hem of his garment, yes, that I could be yes. made home. I'm reminded of Jesus walking down down the road and he yes. sees a man named Zacchaeus up in a tree yes, and Zacchaeus said, saw Jesus and got convicted and said God, Jesus if I did anything yes. wrong, if I hurt anybody, if I yes, jipped sir. and ripped anybody off, I will give them four times back yes, for whatever I may yes, have sir. stolen and yes, something sir. about Jesus that what he did while he was here, I'm being reminded of a friend oh how he loved Lazarus Oh, how he loved Mary and Martha. And I remembered about Jesus waiting and tearing and yes. Lazarus had died and Lazarus was dead and been in the grave for four days. And yes, Jesus sir. shows up on the yes, scene sir. and Jesus is standing outside. He says, I just want you all to know that I am the resurrection. Yes, yes, I sir. am the life. Yes, and if I tell him to come out, yes. he's got to get up and come out. Yes. It was what Jesus did that made his name so so great. So here Lazarus yeah. is. Lazarus was laying there in that tomb all dead and all of a sudden his spirit decided yes, to come yes, back sir. in his physical body and Lazarus coughed and he got yes, up sir. and he walked out. I'm telling you a thing. It is not what you say that will make your name great. It is what you do yes, sir. that Amen. will make your name great. Yes, sir. It's what you do yes, sir. that will make your name great. Yes. You can make a name for yourself by doing the works of God. Yes, God is wanting us to wake up and take our rightful place in the earth yes. and recognize that we have been given dominion in this earth. I'm going to close here in just a few minutes. I'm going to go back to our original text and Summarize, and then we're going to be done. Over in Acts chapter 19, it reads as follows. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who were doing this. And one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are y'all? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Do you not know that Paul had another name and it was Saul? 
Do you know I'm going to try to break it down just a little bit for you right here. Saul had made a name for himself as a persecutor of the saints. Yes. Saul was going around killing and crucifying Christians. Saul was there when Stephen was stoned to death, and he was there giving his very approval. But he was proud, and he was arrogant in his intelligence. But don't you know that Saul had a name change? Just like some of you and some of my eyes. We had a name change. Did you not have a name change? I went from being lost to now I am found. Oh, uh, don't you know that God found me in a depraved state of mind? God found me when I could not yes. realize that I was even lost. Don't you know that Saul had a name change? His name changed when he had an encounter with God. I need you to get this, and I want you to hear this right now. Saul was doing his own thing. Yes, Saul sir. met God, then he started doing God's thing. Yes, Don't sir. you know that the enemy didn't know or nothing about Saul until Saul became Paul? And as soon as Paul started doing what God wanted him to do, all of a sudden the enemy started taking notice. I need you to understand that some of you are going to be so great in the yeah, kingdom yeah, yeah. that the enemy is going to take notice of you just like he did with Paul. He took notice of Paul but not until after he had his conversion. Paul said, I am going to seek after God just as hard, if not harder, as I sought after the things of the world. Some of us need to make it up in our mind that we're going to run after Jesus just as hard as we ran after the things that we want. Some of us need to decide that I am going to chase after him just as hard so that I can make my name great in the kingdom, so much so that the enemy knows me by name. His works were so mighty through God that he gained the respect of the enemy. You've had that name change in your life. But if you do the work, if you do the work, your name will be made great. Can you see the enemy having a conversation over you? Y'all don't want to go with me. You got to go with me this morning All right. in my little spiritual mind. Can you see the enemy having a conversation over you? I better keep do what I can to keep Brother Pastor from getting to that meeting. Because if he get there, something's going to break loose. I better do what I can to keep Deacon so-and-so out of that place. Because if Deacon gets in there and pray a prayer, something's going to break loose. I better do what I can to keep Sister Northerton off of that piano. Because if she gets to play a note, something's going to break loose. I need you to understand that some of us in here, we've been fighting the enemy for a long time. And the enemy knows you by name. And we need to recognize that God wants us to do the work so that we can honor that name of being called a Christian. Yeah, 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 yeah. To know you by your name. Yes, to know you by your name. And say, I know Paul, yeah. but who are you? Yeah. Who are you to be telling me that I need to leave? Who are you to be exercising authority yes, over me? But when you got the right hookup, and Jesus is dwelling on the inside of you. You can tell that enemy to get out of your house. You can tell that enemy to get out of your friends. You can tell that enemy to get out of your church. Y'all aren't with me. Y'all aren't with me. Y'all aren't with me. But that's all right. But you need to understand that you have that ability. Because Jesus said the same things that I do. Read it. It's in John chapter 14. The same things that I do, you can also do. And even greater things. Raise your hand. Did, did Jesus cast out spirits? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did Jesus heal the sick? Yes. Did Jesus raise the dead? Oh, yes. Did Jesus turn water into wine? Yeah. Did Jesus calm the storm? Yeah. So the very same thing. But see, we take God, and I'm getting ready to close, and we put him in this box that our mind can absorb. And we won't let him outside of our box. Tradition, religion, 
and denomination has formed a box in your experiences and what you've been taught. And you put God in that box. And then when people start trying to tell you God wants to heal you, you can't seem to get your box to grow big enough to believe that. Well, I want to tell you today, you need to take the box off of God. And whatever the word says that God can do, he can do it. And the Bible tells me that I can pray for the sick, then I'm going to believe it. And we need to start operating in the giftings of the Holy Ghost that he has blessed us with and stop taking our tails and running from the devil. All right. What you got to be afraid of? What you got to be afraid of? What you got to be afraid of? Let us stand.